everybody. Hello, hello. Hi. Oh my gosh. It's here. It's finally here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it's funny. It's like when we talked about this concept. So everybody is watching. Welcome to the very first inaugural episode of Veganish and with Dr. Monique May, also known as the physician in the kitchen. This is a concept. So can I tell this in a hit, the brief history of how we got to this yeah, point? Yeah, okay. So y'all remember back in the spring when we were doing a series of Facebook Lives called Community Immunity regarding COVID. And so uh, we were going around and picking states and just kind of concentrating on states. And so uh, Dr. May is in the great state of North Carolina. And so when we were focusing on North and South Carolina, we had Dr. May on the show. So after uh, I read her bio, I was like, we need to have her. Oh, she has some great stuff in her bio. We were talking about COVID and preventing COVID, but there were some great things in bio. And I sent her a message and said, Dr. May, we got to get you back on. And so I don't know if you've noticed, we've, sub, you know, we've, we've had her on other programming since then. And then we just said, you know what? We've got to do this show called Veganish. And so that's what you're watching here today. This show is called Veganish, and it's really about how you can incorporate more fruits and vegetables in your diet. And so most of us, like me, don't know how to do it. The only vegetables I know are uh, potatoes and french fries, and I don't even think those are vegetables. So we're going to get, <laughs> we're going to get, a, as, as you say here in the South, I'm from the South, we're going to get a learning from uh, Dr. May about how we can be more vegan-ish. And then if you want to go all the way, we can teach you how to do that too. Take it away, Dr. May. <laughs> Ellis, thank you so much. I am so excited right now. I'm, I'm trying to stay in my seat. I'm, I hope I don't <laughs> levitate because I'm so excited. Everybody, thank you so much. I want to I want to welcome everyone. If you're tuning in, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you to BlackDoctor.org for this opportunity. It's so funny because even before I did those lives with you, Ellis, um, years ago, and we chatted about this last week, I was trying to get on with BlackDoctor.org. So it's so funny how everything in its season, right? It wasn't yes, the right yes. time then, but it's the right time now. So thank you. And too, when I saw your name was Ellis, I knew this was going to be good because that's my baby's middle name. So <laughs> well, we're a special group. We're a special group of those Ellis's. And so, yeah, that this is the our ecclesiastical moment uh, in terms of being in the right season. And so um, we are here. So I'm going to ask the, the I guess the, Fifty million dollar question is, what what does it mean to be vegan? Like, what what is, what is that all about? We've heard we hear that those terms thrown out about gluten free, vegan, all this other pescatarian, all these different terms. What does it mean to be vegan? Well, that's a great question, Alice. But before I get to that, if you don't mind, let me go back that just a little bit and kind of tell oh, yeah. people who I am. Yes. So just in case they just in case they missed all the hullabaloo. <laughs> so I am Dr. Monique. I am a board certified family physician of over twenty years. And I am known as a physician in the kitchen. And through my online platform, such as this, my cooking classes, and my Amazon best-selling book, Meal Masters, Your Simple Guide to Modern Day Meal Planning, I help busy households just like yours, enjoy healthy eating without impacting their hectic schedules. And I'm so excited to have this platform here on blackdoctor.org to do that and more. So we're going to talk a little bit more later about what you're going to expect out of the show. But to answer Ellis's question, what is vegan? Vegan is a particular type of diet or a particular type of lifestyle. It can, it can encompass more than just your diet. But basically what it means is that you only eat plant-based food. So another way to think of it is you don't eat anything that had a mother is how some people describe it. So your, your protein, your carbohydrates, all of your nutri nutrition, all of that comes from, from the ground. So no, that means not even eggs, not even dairy, not even honey, because that's made by bees. So that type of diet would be more vegetarian, but vegan is strictly plant-based. Okay. All right. So that's why we put the ish on it. For those of you that want to take <laughs> 
<laughs> that's why we put the ish. Because that's why I'm so excited to have this show. Because this show is going to be, I'm going to drag you guys along. And please, guys, drop in the chat where you're from and where, you, where you're watching this from. Yeah. Be sure to rep your city. I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx originally. I'm in Charlotte now. But, you know, along the way, I've, I've lived in I've lived in Philly. I've lived in um, Memphis, Tennessee. So please, please, please rep your city. My fam is from Alabama. So please, I want to see where everybody's hailing from. And be sure to tag somebody because I know, if not you, I know you know somebody who needs to hear this information. So they need to come on in this house and fellowship, as my grandmother used to say. <laughs> so, but yes, so I am vegan-ish because I am not fully vegan. So this is my journey. This show that you're watching now and that you'll be watching over the weeks to come, it's really my journey toward a more, uh, toward a more plant-based diet. Um, I've, I'm 51. You know, in the past few years, I've really tried to kind of rethink things and prioritize things for my health. And definitely as a physician, I know what things are better to eat than others. and But I still like some animal products. Like I like honey in my tea, right? So I'm not ready to give that up just yet. So this show is going to bring you along. I'm going to share with you my my challenges, my successes, my aha right. moments, right? Because right. I know I'm not the only one. I can't be the only one with these questions. And so um, hopefully give you some some a, a groundwork to which from which to start your own journey or if you're on it if you just want to tweak it so because that's what it's about right the journey not the not necessarily the destination but the journey yes, and, and yes. progress over perfection so we're gonna get into all of that <laughs> i like that progress over perfection it's about the journey all of that makes sense and i love the fact that you that and which is why when we when we came up with the name we we're doing our production and pre-production all the getting ready to try to come up with the show concept Veganish made the most sense because we're going to be ish, right? We're going, we can, we can, but what we're going to do and what I'd like for us to do, because that's why I'm here on this journey with you, because I am struggling, right? I, as a, and I'm 49 and I'm just really recognizing that I need to eat more fruits and vegetables, you know, as I've gotten older. And it's hard because those old habits, um, We've trained our bodies to like certain things and not like certain things. And that, and so I don't know where to get started. Do I start with salads? Do I start here? Whatever. And so Dr. May is here to help all of us, you know, learn some different recipes, learn some different ways of thinking about food. So we're going to, she's got some wonderful acronyms and we're going to really get into just, just so excited. But it's just like, we're going to learn different ways. We're going to retrain and rethink food in a way that's going to be more healthy for ourselves so we can live longer lives and live healthier lives along the way. So exactly. I, I'm here. I got my notebook. I got my notebook right here. I'm sorry. I, I, I had it on camera, but I got my notebook right here. And I'm taking notes on, on how to there you <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I, I I love. I mean, your question about you don't know where to start or your struggle. I think you first of all, you're not alone. But I I want to kind of reframe that if we can, sure. because struggle implies I don't know, like doom and gloom, and it's hard, and it's okay. versus you know a challenge. Because if you go through a challenge, you, the way I see it, you kind of you problem solve and then you figure out how to get to the other side. And so maybe if we put it that way, because we realize that you may not get it right the first time, you're probably not going to get it right the first time. But that's right. OK. It's OK, because it really is mindset. And I talk about this in my my first book, Meal Masters, about having the right mindset, because you can't be successful. <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me one second. Mm. Tickle in my throat. <clears throat> you can't be successful if you don't have the right mindset. Right. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, realizing that you don't have to be perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to start. Well, uh, while you're, um, you can take another sip of water. We're going to uh, April. I think she put it in the right way. I think I choose to think of myself as exploring options instead of a struggle. 
uh, are used to, th you know, used to think of it as struggling, but now I'm exploring options. I think that's a really great way, April, of, of putting it in terms of, uh, so I'm not going to use the word struggle. We're going to, we're going to move away from struggle. We're going to call them challenges and exploring options. So yeah. April, thank you for that. Cause I, I think I, I, you're, you're right though, in terms of training our mind, rethinking some things, we have to rethink the language that we use and the language that we use has a lot of, uh, it, it can color how we approach. Uh, certain, you know, changes. Or if I'm trying to make this change to eat more vegan issue, to, to lead more plant-based lifestyle, then I can't look at it as a struggle because then it becomes a fight. Whereas if it's a challenge or if it's me exploring new options, then it becomes, I've trained my, I'm training myself to think about it in, in a different way and say, you know what, I can do this more so than I got to fight my way into eating more plant fruits and vegetables. Exactly, exactly. Because then people, you know, they tend to think, oh, they hear vegan and they think either, oh, that's for other people to do or that means I'm just going to be eating lettuce all day. And <laughs> neither of those statements are true, right? I have a story to tell. My son, I have a 17-year-old whose middle name is Ellis, as I've told you. And he is a meat eater, okay? Mm -hmm. That boy, if I could get cows and chickens in the backyard, he would probably be very happy with that. Well, it's been interesting kind of, you know, introducing him, sneaking things into him, to his diet. And but today I had a win because he had instead of his regular Honey Nut Cheerios, he had a bowl of my chocolate quinoa, which I use instead of like oatmeal. I like to make quinoa. Okay. And then for lunch, he took a tempeh sandwich, a, grease, a grilled tempeh. So if you're familiar with the grilled Reuben sandwich with the corned mm -hmm. beef and the sauerkraut. Right. He took a vegan version of that to school today. Oh, wow. And when I asked him, when I made it for him this morning, I said, well, you want half the sandwich or whole? He was like, no, the whole sandwich. <laughs> so if I can get this carnivore who I live with to eat some plants, <laughs> at least, and that's the thing, you know, if you're not ready to go all the way, that's fine. But just add more plants along the way, you know, and that's all I right. to do. So if I can get him to eat more plant-based several times a week, you know, there's meatless Monday, there's try it Tuesday, different ways to kind of make it fun and, and, you know, just try new and different things, then that's already a win. You've already had a victory. Absolutely. Absolutely. So my man, Donald, he's like me, so I'm put his question up here. Cause so will help me get started. And so Donald, that's what we're here to do. We are here to help you. You, get you are started. in the right place, Donald. Stick around. We've got a lot of stuff. I'm so excited. We've got, he told you I've got these acronyms. I'm a word nerd. So I like to come up with stuff. So we're going to talk, we're going to get into that. Um, we've got a segment called, uh, we're going to do a be called vegan or not. Nah, right, Ellis? We talked about that. Ooh, so I'm really cool. excited about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited about that. Basically, it's just one day I was um in my refrigerator looking, I wanted some bar barbecue sauce. And I don't know how long this bottle had been in my refrigerator, but I just happened to look at the, you know, ingredients. And it had high fructose corn syrup in the top five. Now we're we're gonna get into this issue. Some of this stuff is gonna be right. repetitive. But basically, if an ingredient is in the first five, that means it's in there, it's, it's in that recipe, um, like in decreasing amount. So if it's in the top five, it's in there pretty much. I was like, how did I buy this? So I started going through my stuff in the refrigerator and tossing out stuff. So that got me thinking like, you know, maybe I should do this and figure out what's vegan and what's not. And so, yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna raid like the, the refrigerator, the pantry, your spice cabinet and see some stuff in here. You may be surprised to find out it's actually not vegan. So okay, so I got a question because I've heard that I've heard that term a lot of times, and I was like, and people say it is bad. Why is high fructose corn syrup not a ideal ingredient in foods? Because first of all, it's highly processed, and anything that's highly processed is going to act in the body as it promotes what we call oxidation. So that's stress on the body. So okay. it ages the body. It makes you increases your risk for heart disease, for diabetes, for certain types of cancers. So the more processed something is, the, that that fructose and and the, that sugar is it's just harmful. It's, it's, it works as a, as a toxin in the body almost. And so it can it lead to high sugar levels and the damage that we see from that. So we really encourage, you know, as you're looking for sugar, because it's, again, I'm not going to tell you not to eat an entire food group. I don't think that's realistic, Right. but you want to choose wisely and you want to make the, the best 
choices that you can to, for, for your for your meals. So when you're looking for sweeteners, we'll talk about things like maple syrup and agave and you know coconut sugar and all that. But so high, high fructose corn syrup is on the list of avoid. Okay, so yeah, because I, I see, I mean, but it's everywhere, right? It's it it's is. everywhere. It's it in is. those sodas that we drink. It's in those. Uh, it's in a lot of those those sugary juices, and we say, "Oh, I'm not going to drink soda. I'm drinking these juices." Turn right. those, some of those juices that that we drink around, and you might see high fructose corn syrup because they use that to stretch it and make it sweeter. And so we Amazing. take it to, to all these great things. And so um, I, while we while we've got Dr. May here, this the show is going to move very very fast. It's only thirty minutes long. I know. If you have any questions? If you have some topics that you want Dr. May to touch on. Please drop those in the comment section because you're going to drive. You're going to be the driver of this program. And so we're going to be here to answer your questions. We're going to be here not only to learn about her journey and learn things along the way, but we're going to be here to answer your questions. So if you got something you want to know about vegan or being vegan ish, some things that you could do differently in your diet to make it more healthy. That's what we're here for. Drop those in the comment section. Let us know what you want to learn about. And we will make sure that we incorporate that in this show. Definitely. And the other thing I want to say too, Ellis, is let them know we talked about nutrition in the news because I think that's another segment that we'll be doing throughout yes. the the coming episodes. Because you know, how much information are you are you get? We, we want you to get quality information, right? So um, you want to make sure you're getting your news from reputable sources as right. far as what's good for you, what's not good for you. And so I'm going to basically news jack from time to time, talk about stuff that's, <laughs> that's in the news. about right. food. Like, For example, have you heard, Ellis, about what's going on with, with pork and bacon? That Have you heard about the, the, what is it? They're calling it the Baconopolis or the uh, uh, the apocalypse, but with bacon? Are you, are you, are you thinking <laughs> about my bacon? I am. Well, the first show went with. <laughs> I know, clutch the pearls, right? <laughs> They are, uh, well, a couple of things are going on. Of course, COVID has disrupted all kinds of, of food supply of the the, right. um, the the supply chains and so forth. So that's part of it. But out in California, they have passed legislation. It's the animal welfare bill that takes effect next January. And it has to do with how pregnant pigs are housed. And they have to have so many inches around them. And so they, they can't use pork or bacon from pigs that were not kept this way. So apparently people are like all up in arms. There's going to be a mad bacon shortage. So you'll see the prices go up. It's so funny. My mom told me the other day that she was looking for some oxtails and the package was like $25 for some oxtails. Now oxtails are kind of like caviar anyway. They get, they're kind of pricey, right? Yeah, yeah. But $25, I told, my, I told my mom, I said, God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> It's like yeah, eat less oxtail. Who is paying twenty five dollars for some oxtail? So yeah, so just stuff like that. We'll be talking about timely um, nutritional news. Um, so if you, if you, like you said, if you have questions, if you've seen something, you have a question, I'll try my best to answer it. Well, we got we've already got some some great topics for for whole shows. So like uh, Sherry's asking, what's the best way to gradually adopt a vegan lifestyle? Well, that's what this whole show is about, Sherry. So we're going to be doing that along. the Think we is he frozen? I don't know. I think I think we lost Ellis. He'll come back on. But yes, yeah, Sherry, to answer your question, we will be talking about that. How to start? Really, for me, it was really just. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you how I started. I I, oh, oh, he's back. Oh, oh, he's back. Yes. Okay. I was like, I I was in mid sentence. Um, so. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. I was thinking we must be we must be doing something right because right, I my my throat got attacked. Your your video went out, so you know you know they say the devil is working on us. This. <laughs> My mom would say, when, you do, when you're on the right path, the devil will find a way to put put, put a block in it. Exactly. But I was I was just answering Sherry's question about how did I how to get started. And for me, it was I, I make these delicious pound cakes. I make the sweet potato pound cake and um this lemon pound cake, but you know, it's got butter and eggs and, and white sugar and everything. And I, one day, and I, and I, I have it in line, my physician in the kitchen line. Um, and I said, you know, I really want to come up with something that I would feel comfortable as a physician selling to people, right? I, I don't feel comfortable telling you a, a full 
pound cake made with all these bad things we just talked about. So I really, I just got in my kitchen, which I call my lab, and I tweaked it. And I was like, well, what's a good egg substitute? What's a good butter substitute? What's a good, you know, milk, uh, cow's milk substitute? And it really was a lot of trial and error. And then that just kind of got me curious. It just was, well, if I did this, what happens if I do that? And it just was, it really just kind of snowballed on itself. And in fact, I've written a whole blog series about it. If you guys want to, you know, get a head start, and, and check my check out my webpage or my my um my website my blog site on my webpage, drmoniquemay.com. I have my ABCs of of vegan of being veganish, and I talk about each letter is a is a food that I used in my journey to substitute. So like A is for avocados and B is for beans. I'm not gonna give it all the way. You gotta go check it out. But I talk about that. And so some of that information we'll be sharing with you during the show as well. Absolutely. So there is another uh, question, and this is a really good one, and this is more health related. How can you reverse pre-diabetes? And we know that from just speaking, there's about 88 million Americans that are pre-diabetic, um, and they're in that range, uh, blood sugar range from like, I believe it's 100 to 125, mm -hmm. uh, 120 in terms of your blood sugar level, and that's considered pre-diabetic. And so how do you reverse pre-diabetes and high cholesterol with a plant-based diet? And so I think that is a really, really great question to ask. And it's going to be a great topic for our show because we're going to talk about those foods that will help lower, that will help get some of those fats out of your bloodstream and that cholesterol and to lower that sugar in a natural way so you don't have to cross that line to becoming diabetic. Well, thank you so much for asking that question. I'm sorry, I didn't catch catch your name. Um, that was the perfect tee up for, for what we're going to be talking about. But just to kind of give you a little bit of an answer, you know, the the I, I tell them if, um, on my social media, I'm a physician in the kitchen on all social media, and I talk about eat your colors, eat the rainbow. There's a, I know there's a candy slogan that says something about the rainbow. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, eat the rainbow. And by that, I mean, when you go in the produce aisle of your grocery store, and just look at all those colors. Like we mm -hmm. tend to kind of get in our in a rut. Like we know we like our collard greens and our corn and our, you know, tomatoes or what have you. But there's so many other vegetables and those bright colors, those beautiful oranges and yellows and purples and reds, those are phytonutrients. Those are plant chemicals that are that give you the benefits that we're talking about. They lower cholesterol. They help prevent heart disease. They help prevent cancer. All kinds of things. So if you just think of it that way, by really putting a rainbow on your plate and making sure you have like lots of different, you know, there's lots of different textures and varieties that you can experiment and try, then you, that's over half the battle right there. And then it just comes in as far as how do you want to season it? How do you want to, you know, to try things different ways? I tell people, look, you know, if you maybe you're not as adventurous, and that's fine. You know, maybe you, you know, you want to say, hey, look, baby steps. I got you. Try something that's kind of familiar, like broccoli. Well, we all kind of know broccoli. I think um, pretty much everybody likes broccoli. Um, but say, you know, it look, well, say if you want to try something different. Well, broccoli kind of looks like cauliflower, right? It's related. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. try some cauliflower. Cook it the same way you cook the broccoli. So you already know how to cook broccoli or, you know, steam it. Doesn't take much. Try that with cauliflower. And then that by that way, you're staying somewhat in your comfort zone, but you're also trying something new. That is that. That's a great response. I love the eat the rainbow. So that somebody put that in the comment section. <laughs> eat the rainbow, and, and and you're very very true with that. And I and I think if I can add one thing, it's like there are certain vegetables that I know that I like. There are certain um, ingredients I know I like. I I like low spicy food. So what I'll do is I always I buy some jalapenos and I'll chop them up, and I mix them in with different types of vegetables in order to add a little spice to it, changes the flavor. And it's it, it's basically married with a flavor or something that I like. And so therefore I'm more apt to eat it. So I might take my spinach and saute some some jalapeno, put the spinach with it. And now I've got a little, I've changed just that kind of the dullness of spinach. I spiced it up a little bit and then I'm more apt to eat it. So that that's another kind of technique that you can utilize in order to fit more foods. Instead of using green peppers, grab the red one. Grab the orange one, grab the yellow one. And I know grocery stores tend to charge more for the colored peppers for whatever reason, but, you know, mix that in. It makes your plate more colorful and you're getting a different type of nutrient into your body. Exactly. And for those parents of young kids out there, believe me, I, I know I've been there. You know, I, I'm not above hiding food, right? If you've got picky eaters. <laughs> 
right? They may not want to eat those vegetables. Make some lasagna or a soup or something and just, you know, load it up with those with those beans or those vegetables. And they'll, they won't even know that it's in there, but you know that you're filling them up with healthy things. So get creative with it because it's, you know, it's, it's, it, there's so much to explore. And that's why I'm so excited about this show because I think we just, we have a potential to do, do a lot here with this. So I'm super excited and thankful for this opportunity. Yeah. I mean, at this, at this, Half hours go by so fast. So there's there's a the question. There's two people that are asking about proteins and how if they go vegan, if they're having a more vegan diet, how do they get protein? How do, are they? How do they know they're getting enough protein in a vegan diet? I know that's always the first question. I mean, all these vegetables, protein comes from meat, right? And so that's always a, that's a one to one ratio. So how do they get more protein if they're eating a more vegan diet? That's an excellent question. I, first, I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer that by an example. The largest animals on this planet are not meat eaters. I'm going to say that again. Your elephants, your bison, your, I mean, these ginormous animals, and they eat what? Grass. Well, we're fortunate that we have more to eat than just grass. So there's a lot of plant uh, protein sources. I mentioned tempeh earlier. Tempeh is, is made from soy. It's the, they cook the, the uh, ferment, the soybeans versus tofu, which is where they kind of do it like they do cheese almost. It's a different process. So with tempeh, you get the whole soybean. Those things are packed with protein. You can get anywhere from about 14 to 20 or so grams of protein per serving. You've got mushrooms. They're a great source. First of all, any type of, um, well, that, that's more fiber, but the, the, there definitely are ways to get protein. That's a big myth that you cannot get enough protein eating uh, that, you, that you have to have meat to get protein because it's not. There's tempeh, there's seitan, which is another uh, meat replacement type thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's called wheat meat because it's made with, with a gluten um, agent. Uh, but lots of different sources out there. And that, that's, you know, not true. And then the, the vegetables themselves often have, you know, good, good amounts of protein. So when you add it all up, you more than likely are getting an adequate amount. Plus in your plus in your things like your 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 milks as well, like your plant milks like soy and almond milk are good good sources as well. Okay. And then we've got uh April wants to know, she wants she's asking, please consider doing an episode on stomach health. Um dealing with inflammation of the stomach, and she is open to any suggestions. Definitely. So, oh, that's yeah. so key because, you know, your stomach processes all this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely will be talking about that. There's um, right. You know, October, of course, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But I believe I, I'm blanking. I think November is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. I'll, I'll be sure to know. But we will definitely be talking about that. There is factors for uh, for gastric or stomach cancers, esophageal cancers, because we know that in addition to the big players like smoking and excessive alcohol, it could be, you know, all those grilled foods, eating um, really, really um, that, that char, you know, we look for that, that good char on that grilled food. But some of right. those can actually be carcinogens, which means they increase your risk for cancer. Right. Um, processed meats, like sausages, and deli meats, those as well. So lots to, to unpack there. But yeah, definitely. Great, great, great suggestion. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Somebody told me, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Somebody said that cancer starts in the gut. Um, well, some cancer does. I mean, I don't know that all yeah. cancer starts in the gut, <laughs> but, um, but I, I, and I don't know if they mean based on what you eat that that's where it starts. I'm not really sure, but um, definitely diet, we know, plays a role in a lot of cancers, which is why it's so important to get this information out there because we're trying to just get people to be the healthiest they can be with whatever choice they 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 make we just want you to be the healthiest you know the the, the technical term for i call it veganish but the technical term is flexitarian that means that you eat mostly plant-based, but you're eating meat or, or, or animal products, uh, you know, maybe two or three times a week or what have you, or a certain amount of grams. Some people weigh it out and say, well, I'm going to have this many grams or that many grams. Um, so versus vegetarian where there's no, no red meat. So lots of different terms out there, but yeah, we're going to talk about how do you decide, um, you know, what's right for you. And of course, you know, if you have health conditions, this, this information is, is meant to be, um, taken with uh, your your personal health in mind. And so you would take this information back to your doctor because we're not here to, to, to treat you. We're here to give you the information. But of course, you would need to speak with your doctor about your particular health concerns and what diet is right for you. 
Right. Know your numbers, talk to your doctor, get your baseline, and then talk about what, what would be best for you and, and your current health situation. Um, we're, we're coming up on the ends. What are we going to be talking about next week? This was an well, introduction show. We just, yes. we just got to let you know who we are, who Dr. May is, and what we're, this show is about. That's what right. Are we I do, do want to acknowledge um, the folks who are, because I, I blanked out. Thank you so much. Your seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, definitely great sources of protein. So thank you ladies for, for contributing that, because I, I did mean to mention that. Next week, you know, I that food, that nerd in me. Um, we're going to talk about what what's your diet. You know, that commercial, what's in your wallet? We're going to talk about what's your diet. And it's going to be D, it's, it's the acronym. So D period, I period, E period, T period. And we're going to talk about why I think diet with a capital D is a four letter word. Ooh. Oh, yeah. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to get into it. We're going to get into it next week. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm put this on the screen so we can get people to know. Uh, I'm not going to put the whole thing because we got to come back next week to find out what That's each right. stands for. What is it? We're going to find out what's in your diet next exactly. week. And why diet with a capital D is a four letter word to Dr. Monique. Why diet is a four letter word. It absolutely is because it, <laughs> it, 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 it lowers my self esteem every time I try to go on and mess it up. <laughs> So, yeah. We don't want that. We don't want that. We we want something that's going to uplift, not make you feel bad. So you know, that's why it's a four letter word. It, it is absolutely is. And well, this has been a pleasure. This has gone by so fast. So make sure you follow Dr. May on social media. She is at uh, not the easiest physician in the kitchen across social media. Um, and you can go to her website, which is drmoniquemay.com. Uh, and she's got blogs and recipes, and you can order her her book that she has out and she's got another book coming out. This, I'm just secret between me and you. She's got another book that's coming out soon. So we're going to talk about that as well. So you can get all of that great information there on drmoniquemay.com. And you can come here every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern to learn a little bit more on how to live a vegan-ish or as we learned tonight, flexitarian. That's right. <laughs> flexitarian. That's <laughs> Well, it has been a pleasure. This is gonna this is gonna be the most fun I'm gonna have on, on a Tuesday in a long time. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We're looking forward to, to next week. Send your keep putting your comments and questions in uh, in the in the comment box. We will get to them, we will answer your questions, and we'll make sure that we cover everything that you want to cover and share it with your friend. So we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you, everybody.